I'm going to start by putting white in here. Now, I've already used the white pencil to give myself an outline. Now, this is going to be a long job, folks. So what I plan to do is, what I usually do, is I start the ball rolling and then advance it. Because once I've got the colours worked out and you've seen them, I can get on with it. Now, what we're going to do here, let me just show you, let me do a little bit here. Now, you see the, the green background coming through? Well, we can't have that. I've got to make this as solid as I can. Now, i just do this because it can take a little time to fill that up. You don't want to press too hard, you've just got to keep at it and allow the pencil to find its way into the paper, which is that. If you start pressing too hard, you could get a crushed paper on your hand. That would create a problem. Oh, that's good, that's pretty good. Okay, now, what about up here? Well, this is the other one that we've got to worry about. And the white, of course, is a material here because that's going to be absorbed by the other. Let's just do a little bit here. A lot of artistic license. Now you see that's gone on really well too. Now I've chosen these two colours because the white and the yellow are soft. That means they'll go into the paper really nicely. Got it? Anyway, you can leave me to do that and that. Now the only problem we've got here, and it is it is a little problem, is in here this is going to be have to be darker. Now if I put that on there, that on there, and that on there, I'm not going to see this line. So what I'll do here is I'll add another colour, a darker colour. And I think what I'm going to there, I'm going to use there is a, another yellow. I'm going to use a mixture of colours here. Now if you haven't got all these colours, and it may be that you won't have, don't worry. I'm going to, uh, you'll be able to use alternatives. This is a Carbothello I'm using now, you see, putting that in there. And then if I put that on there, you'll see that I can see the difference between the two. All right. Now if I want to make it a little darker, which I do, I've got another colour which I'm going to use at this one. This is another credit colour. So I've used Faber, Carbothello and credit colour. Now you see now I've got now I've got that distinguished between the two. All right, so that's those are the colours that I'm using at the moment. Uh, I'm going to be lots more in, but watch me as I go through. I should finish this one and this one and this one, and then well, I say finish it. I should put all the colours in, but I'll be making sure that I get the uh, contrast. And the first, you know, well minutes of a picture really starts to dictate the colours and I've now got the colours so I've got to work on them. Now I've come back in because what I found was I didn't need that under colour. I can, I can put this carpathedra straight on. I, I didn't think I could do that but it's going on really well as you can see. Nice soft colour. So now it makes going to make me just a little bit easier. Because what I can do, before I put the light on, I can put this colour in. And the contrast between the two will be greater. And that means then, if, when I bring this other colour in, which I was using just now, it's going to be just that little bit darker. Not much, just a tone. It's only a tone, really. And it's going to be darker than that in a minute, because I'm going to use a... In fact, I will do. I'll show you. I'm going to use a... I'm going to try one... 183. Oh, that will work. In fact, it might work better. I might dispense with that one now. You see how interesting, though, this is. You're starting to see how I, right at the beginning, I've never done anything like it before. So, right at the beginning, you can see how this is going to turn out. Now we have a lovely contrast there, and that is very close to the colour I want to get. I, I think I probably it's going to have to be a little bit darker than that, so I'll have to choose a darker colour. But for the moment, that's a good contrast, and it will mean I can do all of this. I'll show you how I'm going to do this again. 
middle there. And of course you've also got a transition. I might as well show you while I'm talking to you. If you're wondering, how am I going to get a background on here? Well, it's going to be difficult, but if you've seen my work before, you know I can do it. Now this transition between the two, what we need to do is to bring the colour up into that. Let me show you. We leave this on here anyway, because this is colour. that we leave for that, which is lovely. And that's where the transition comes in. You just gradual. There's not much, just one bit, but when we do it all, it's going to look great. So, there we are, we've got, a, we've got an idea. We've got an idea, so I, you can watch me now as I work through these, just these two here. And once I've done that, then we'll um, move on and spread out.
Now this is a really unusual colour. And what I'm going to do, I've put the white on, I've put the ivory on, so that gives me the base. What I'm going to do now is put that colour on, 172 now, look at that. You wouldn't think you could put that on there, would you? But you can. i put a little bit on, I'm going to put a little bit more now. It's all a little bit of a compromise because you'll never get exactly the colour. But it's the impression that's important. A little bit there. I mean, this is almost, it's like a shadow actually in the, on the petal, which is really attractive. And we can put the white back on. I've got to trick up my sleeve in a minute. And I'll show you. And we can get back into it. Very, very subtle. But fascinating. Flowers and portrait work are very similar. They have to use very subtle tones. And we have to put a grey on there as well in a minute. Now this one is 185. Now I'm going to put this on, but again, I'm going to whisper it on. It's just a little touch of tone. And I think that the colour will end up as close as I can get to the creamy look of this petal. It's coming now. See, once you've got, once you've got, once I've got that, once I've got that, I mean, I've still got other colours to put in, but basically I've, I've got the idea now and I can continue with it. It's always worth just a little bit of practice. Right, so that's great. Now, what, what you can't do very easily here is, is use a colour shaper. I may try it later, but at the moment I'm going to try not to. And this is the general white. This is my trick up the sleeve job. This is a a much stronger and more positive white. See, as soon as I put that on there, you can see what I mean. Now, the only thing is, I haven't got that shape right. And this is important, Colin, you've got to get it right. But you can make these adjustments as you go along anyway. But that comes more like round there, like that. So what I'm going to do is build that up a little bit more with my ivory. And my white. As, as well as being uh, a stronger pigment. The general white is also softer because it's a charcoal you see it's not uh, well it's not classed as pastel but it works really well with pastel and I use it a lot now. We don't sell them on the site but you can get them on the internet just search for general white charcoal and you'll find them very very reasonably priced and they really make a difference to the picture. Um, now I'm going to try now. If this doesn't work, it doesn't matter because I can just go over it again with uh, what pastel. This is the softest colour shaper that I've got. I make sure I've got nothing that's going to come and contaminate the colours I've put on there. And you can just stroke that in. I'm just hoping that this will work. It looks as though it might do. 